Hey there, church. It's so wonderful to see all of you. Welcome to our virtual worship. If you're visiting with us this morning, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Chris, and I'm so grateful to be worshiping together with you. A note about how our worship is working during this time. We continue to worship in person in our sanctuary. And if you're in the area on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m., we absolutely invite you to join us for worship and to praise God together. If you can't get here on Sunday mornings, that 1030 a.m. worship service is also live streamed. And then later on Sunday afternoons, this service will be available for you to worship on demand from wherever you are. All of our worship services and resources can be found on our website at newhopelc.org and can also be streamed on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash newhopelc. Today, friends, if you're curious about New Hope and who we are, I want to invite you to check out our website, again, at newhopelc.org. And if you have any questions about what we're about, or if you have any prayer requests today, or if you just want to say hi, would you drop me a line and let me know? You can email me at pastor at newhopelc.org, or you can email our admin at info at newhopelc.org. You can also drop a comment on YouTube or on our Facebook page even at facebook.com slash newhopelc. However you choose to interact, church, we want to hear from you. We hope and we pray that you are well today, and I want you to know that we give thanks to God for you and that we are holding you in our prayers. These aren't easy times to be sure, but I want you to know that wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome here. There is a place for you here. God walks with you here. Lastly, church, we invite you to share this worship service with your friends and family. Share it to your social media feeds. Send it out over email. Invite folks to worship with you today. The best place to get all of the information and most up-to-date info about everything happening here at New Hope all together in one place is our Thursday afternoon eblast newsletter. Our email newsletter has updates about worship, faith formation, ways for you to be involved in serving our community. That is the best place to get all of the information all together in one place. If you're not already subscribed to our weekly email and you would like to be, please send an email to info at newhopelc.org with the word eblast in the subject line and we will get you added to our distribution list. The links to our weekly newsletter are also posted to our Facebook page. Again, that address is facebook.com slash newhopelc. If you're looking for a faith community, faith community today, I am so thrilled that God has brought you here to New Hope. We believe that the good news of God in Christ Jesus is for all people, regardless of their personal status, race, creed, sexuality, gender identity, or any other label or condition that divides and separates people. We are a champion of doing God's work with our hands, particularly serving the underprivileged and the vulnerable in our community and beyond. We believe that each and every person has unique gifts from God that are to be used to better our world and are to be used for the good of all humankind. It is our sincere prayer that everyone we encounter will experience the life-changing love of God through us. Again, if we can hold you in prayer today, would you please let us know? Drop a comment on YouTube or Facebook. Send me an email at pastor at newhopelc.org. We love you and we are grateful to God for you. Church, if you would like to make a gift to our ministry or give your offering today, we want to encourage you and to thank you for your incredible generosity. 
There are many ways that you can do this. You can mail in your gift. You can drop it by our office. You can also very easily give online with any credit or debit card using the link on the screen below. That link is also posted down in the video description. However you choose to give, whether your time, your energy, or your resources, we just want to express to you our gratitude for your incredible and continued generosity. And lastly, church, we want to encourage you to bring yourselves fully and to participate fully in worship today. Grab your Bible or open the Bible app on your phone and read through the lessons with us and follow along. We invite you to sing along with the hymns that will be displayed up on your screen. We invite you to truly worship. Light a candle. Sit on the floor. Whatever helps you to set this time and this space apart. Be present here. This is holy space. Take a deep breath. Receive the Holy Spirit. God is here. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze out upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We fail to steward the gifts you have entrusted to us. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Beloved children, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sin. Amen.
Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Hello, here we are on the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. So we find our 18th and we remember what time of year we are. See if I can do it with one handed. I can, I can, I know I can. 18th Sunday after Pentecost. And I brought my friend Deborah here today. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Brought her along because today we're going to tell the story of Esther the Brave. Oh, I love Esther the Brave. I do too. And so uh, Deborah is, loves the story so much, she thought she would. Uh, come help tell the story today, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. So in the story of the Bible called Esther, yes. Well, wow. Yes. Yes. Well, actually in the story, there's a lot of no's as in no, no. Oh yeah. There's this king. Yes. Yes. King. You like to say yes a lot, but I'm saying no. The king liked to say no. What did he like to say no to? Oh gosh, what did he not? Let's see. The king, if you asked him, 
can we change what we're having for dinner to hamburgers? He would say, guess what? No, that is correct. Or if you ask the king, can we have a party at the castle this weekend? He would say what? No, you're hanging, you're getting it, Deborah. Yes, let's see. What else if I asked him? Would you help the people who are hurting outside? The king would say, no, that's right. Even the king would say no to that. The king just, uh, he, he liked to say no a lot. And uh, yeah, so one day, one day, brave Esther, that's right. One day, brave Esther decided she was going to talk to the king. Oh, this is the good part. That's right. We kind of move from no's to guess what? Yes, that's right. So Esther goes to talk to the king and says, knock, knock, knock. And the king says, yes, you are correct. He actually said yes this time. And brave Esther says, uh, king, I know I'm not supposed to come knock on your door unless you call for me first, but I've got something really important to talk to you about. And so can I come in? And the king said, yes, that's right. This time he said yes. And so Esther goes in and talks to the king and says, I know something you don't know. And the king says, yes. And she says, yes, I know something you don't know, which is that someone in your royal court has betrayed you. <gasps> that's right. I think that's what the king did too. And the king said, me? That's right. And Esther said, yeah, I can tell you all about that person. I can point out who they are. It's just, you got to know this first about me. I'm Jewish. And the king didn't know what to say, yes or no or anything, because the king had not been helping Jewish people. And to find out that his wife was Jewish, he was just, well, speechless. And Esther said, I beg you, please have mercy on my people. They are my people. And so please have mercy on the Jews. And the king said, yes. Wow, isn't that cool? Out of all the important things and unimportant things, like what they're gonna have for dinner, the king always said no, and now the king said, Yes, so amazing. And so brave Esther saved the day for her people from being hurt. And she was brave enough to talk to the king who finally said, yes, yeah, I love that story. I love it, I love it, I do too. I do too, Deborah. thanks for helping me tell the story. How about um, we remind our young people how hard it can be to say yes sometimes to, to things that we may not want to say yes to but that can help other people. Like maybe we're going to um, help clean up some trash like we did around church the other day. And we we're like, hmm, let's do that. I don't really want to clean up trash, but I want to help other people. So let's find ways to say yes so we can help others. Let's pray. Okay. Dear God, thank you for Esther's bravery and helping the king to say yes to help others. Help us say yes to helping others too. Amen. Um, amen. Please pray with me this morning, church. God of new life, as the earth turns toward autumn and winter and begins to prepare for its season of rest, keep us attentive to the new life you are bringing forth in this place. Make us ready to respond to the new growth happening here. Amen. A couple of months ago, at the end of July, we heard the familiar story of Jesus blessing and sharing five loaves and two fish, and how everyone who ate that day had enough to eat, so, so much so that there were leftovers, right? And Pastor Janelle's children's sermon was talking about sharing and how we have enough and, and we are enough and how God calls us to share what we have, even if it doesn't seem like very much or how and how our not much can sometimes do miraculous things. And, and, and Pastor Janelle took some, some cuttings from a pothos plant that she has in her office she put each cutting in water and gave a leaf or two to each young person with instructions 
to keep it watered, give it lots of sun, and let it start to grow some roots. And then repot it in some dirt, keep watering it, keep giving it lots of sun, and let it grow. And it should give you your very own pothos plant. And a couple of weeks ago, as part of God's work, Our Hands Sunday, New Hope member Evelyn Potter donated a bunch of cuttings from her fig tree that families could take home and tend and hopefully start to grow their own fig tree. Now, I've told y'all before how much of a green thumb I am not. Like, I think it's, it's probably closer to black. In fact, I have an uncanny ability to kill anything that I try and grow. But so far, the pothos is actually doing pretty okay. Uh, all right? I know, I'm proud of me too. <laughs> I was a little too scared to try and, and, and grab one of the fig cuttings. That's just too much for me, <laughs> for this novice. Now, but here's the thing. The pothos, we haven't repotted it yet. Mostly because I'm too scared that once I do, I'll just kill it. <laughs> but we might try soon. After the big freeze this February, do you remember? Mm, seems forever ago. After the big freeze this past February, we, at our house, along with most everybody down here, had to do quite a bit of trimming in our yard. Uh, trimming of plants and shrubs that just might have made it through. Some did. Not all of them. The ones that did, though, they had to be pruned back quite a bit, like fairly significantly, before new growth was finally able to come in. And, and over the summer, we started to see it start to come in. This is the thing about gardening, though, right? Pruning and cutting back are actually really helpful for plants. It's even healthy. Plants are able to grow bigger and wider. Roots are able to grow deeper when we allow for a season of pruning, of trimming back, of a season of rest and of laying fallow. New life and new growth can only happen when the parts and pieces that aren't serving it and in fact are stifling growth are cut away or allowed to fall away. Are you with me? New life and new growth can only happen when the parts and pieces that aren't serving it, and in fact are actively stifling growth, are cut away or allowed to fall away. This season feels like a long, extended pruning season, does it not, church? Many people over the past 18 months have taken a very close look at their lives and how they spend their time. Many folks have made significant life changes, new jobs, new habits. A lot of people have taken the time to examine and prune away things from their lives before the pandemic that no longer serve them or no longer allow them to thrive. Maybe this season has been that for you too. I know it has been for me. I've made changes over the past year and a half. There are things that I was doing before the pandemic that I have no interest and no intention of adding back into my life. Pruning and cutting away, allowing things that no longer promote growth to fall away is necessary for new life and new growth to happen. But what if we are the ones stifling growth. What if we're the ones who need pruning? Not ourselves, of course. I'm not insisting that you cut yourself off from your communities and your relationships, but what if there are things in your life that are no longer useful or are no longer promoting growth? Not just 
useful in promoting growth within yourselves, but are no longer useful, no longer promote growth in your relationships with others. We saw someone casting out demons, Jesus, and we told them to stop. <laughs> they were doing it in your name, sure, but they weren't part of our group, so we told them to quit it. What are you doing, Jesus responds. They're doing the work that I called you to do. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go around and proclaim God's reign of love. You're supposed to restore people to wholeness. You're supposed to heal people. Why would you stop them? Well, you know, they're not part of our group, so we just told them to stop. Right? So often we get caught up in this, in this us and them mentality. Particularly in the church, amen? <laughs> Are you convicted this morning? Right? We do this. We compare ourselves to other faith communities. Hello, right across the street. We think that we're the ones who've got it right. We're the ones with the goods. I don't know about those other people over there, but we're the ones with this corner of the market on God. You know what I mean? We're the ones who've got this Jesus thing. Us and them. If you're not with me, you're against me, right? You're either on my side or you're my enemy. Rubbish, completely wrong, says Jesus. Whoever isn't against you is for you, Jesus says. Think about how that simple flip changes things. Think about what kind of reversal that is. Instead of seeing everyone as an enemy, what if you saw everyone is in your corner? What if you saw the entire community, the entire communion of saints, friends, as on your side? <clears throat> Holy cow. Y'all watch out, I'm preaching this morning. <laughs> so often, we're the ones, friends, who end up putting stumbling blocks in front of others. Visitors, new people, people new to the faith, folks um, trying out a different expression of the faith that they were taught as a young person. So often, we're the ones putting up those stumbling blocks. Jesus calls this scandalous, by the way. The Greek word for, for stumbling block is scandalon. If any one of you scandalizes one of these new ones, right? It's not, not, not so much young people. It gets translated as little ones, but it's, it's new ones. Again, in the Greek, it's, it's not so much young in age, but more like spiritually immature, uh, uh, neophytes, new ones. We're all a bit spiritually immature in many ways, are we not? If any one of you scandalizes one of these new ones, it would be better for you, for, for a giant millstone to be hung around your neck and for you to be thrown in the sea. You don't float, by the way, with a millstone around your neck. Whatever causes you to stumble, Jesus goes on, whatever causes you to stumble, whatever, whatever it is that you put up in the way of others, cut it off. Cut it out, first of all, but cut it off. Do away with it. Sever it from yourself. It is no longer useful for you. It no longer promotes growth. It no longer gives life better to be dismembered or disfigured but to have fully grasped and fully understood God's radically expansive welcome, God's radically inclusive love, and to, pro to have proclaimed that gospel message and, and welcome and love to someone who desperately needs to hear it. Better for you to be dismembered and disfigured, but to have understood and proclaimed God's radically inclusive love to someone who needs to hear it. Jesus seems to not care very much what we, what we call it, what, what name we use, or even how we address God. The point, Jesus says, is to do the work that you have been called to do. 
And if someone else is also doing that work but happens to call it something different, well, that's okay too. Because at the end of the day, God's reign of love and peace is proclaimed. People are healed. People are made well. Community is restored. Sick folks are restored back to health and wellness. And communities are brought back together. Communities are built up. Neighborhoods are allowed to flourish. Maybe it's less important what we call it, but more that the work of God and the work of Jesus is being done. Amen? Friends, what about new hope? What is the work of God that God is calling us to do in this place? I've said it lots of times over the past months, but I think it's really important to keep naming out loud. If we come out of this pandemic just putting things back exactly the way they were before, we've missed a tremendous opportunity. If we don't allow for some pruning and cutting back, some seasons of rest and fallowness, how in the world can you expect new life and new growth to find its way forth? For our part, we're being very intentional about our decisions. Again, a plug, I encourage you to come to our congregational meeting immediately after worship and hear some of these ways that we're making these decisions. But we're being intentional about them, from faith formation, to worship, to service and mission, every decision about where and how and when is being carefully discerned. What are the decisions around worship that not only allow every single person who wants to worship safely in person here to do so, but what decisions about worship open us up to the gifts and passions, to, to, to the gifts of the spirit and experiences of our neighbors and the ones who aren't here yet, the ones who might click a link on, on, on Facebook and log in to the live stream. You wonder why I have you wave to the camera every morning? Because think about how you feel when someone just says hi to you. What are we doing to, to encourage the gifts and the passions for the ones who haven't made their way here yet? The ones who are searching, looking out, seeking out a faith community who tells them that who they are is nothing more than a beloved child of nothing less than a beloved child of God. A God whose only hope is for their thriving and flourishing. Do you understand how radical this is? Nowhere else in our world are people hearing that who they are is not only enough, but is valued, is celebrated, is affirmed, is encouraged, and is welcomed into a community that loves them just as much as God does. What are the decisions around faith formation that allow us to engage in deep, meaningful and consequential conversations, not just in isolated and segregated age groups, but to nurture the ability for our oldest members to learn from the wisdom of our youngest members, and for our youngest members to learn from the experiences of our oldest members. What's it gonna take, friends? What's it gonna take for us to see ourselves as as responsible for learning and teaching faith to one another, that, that it's this shared endeavor across generational divides. I know, I know that this has felt like an incredibly long season of, of lying fallow and an extended season of pruning and cutting and taking away. How much more, God, how much more do we have to keep cutting back? I know that feeling. But I hope. 
I hope that through those misty eyes and that, that feeling of, of being downtrodden, I hope that through that, you can start to see the signs of new life, those signs that I see poking out, just starting to poke out. We trust and place our hope in the God of resurrection. Death is not the end of the story. New life and new growth are breaking through. I hope that you can start to see the buds starting to form on the tips of the branches, the roots starting to snake and wind as they grow longer and deeper. And now, church, together with the whole people of God, let us join in confessing our faith, the faith into which we are baptized using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, church, separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, made children and heirs of God's promise, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in any need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. We pray for natural wonders of your creation Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. We pray for all those affected by this pandemic, the sick, the dying, the fearful, the unemployed, and the forgotten. We give thanks for the gift of science and the welcome hope of vaccines. We pray for all those who are working on our behalf. Comfort your world, O God. Especially today, we pray for those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, acolytes, and ushers. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. In the midst of anxiety, fear, grief, and pain, help us to be mindful of opportunities for rejoicing. We give you thanks for the many blessings you have given us including those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Accept the gifts you have given first to us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now together with the whole people of God and the entire communion of saints, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray in the language most familiar to you or closest to your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Church, as you share Christ's peace with one another, receive this benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life, to a suffering world, the Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. 
Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.